My name is Garland Van Hook. I'm an architect. I live here in Stanford, Kentucky, and I'm also assisting the the city government with a uh, restoration project that they have on the Harvey Helm Library building. This structure that you see is a is a log cabin and uh, maybe one of the oldest structures uh, in Lincoln County. We started this project uh, because this was discovered to be a log cabin and as you can see the logs are uh, quite large and uh, it, the other things that were uh, discovered is uh, that it was a sited building and for so long no one realized that the cabin was underneath and uh, we uh, in those discoveries we found that the uh, the chinking this was never chinked and uh, the chinking uh, uh, the bark the exposures to the bark and so on uh, were you know somewhat uh, quite unique for an early cabin this this original piece of the structure with it was a uh, Presbyterian meeting house and uh, was uh, uh, one uh, one large room as we understand it with uh, with the with the upstairs uh, sections of it as I guess uh, a, a sleeping quarters for the the traveling preachers um, in this situation we've uh, uncovered uh, all of and taken the siding off uh, to to make the discoveries that we have and uh, we've just began this restoration project. Time frame wise this cabin would have been constructed in the late 1790s and that would have also coincided when things were safe enough for the people to come out of the uh, the fort and uh, begin to live a little more independently. The original courthouse was a log structure as well and obviously it is it is long since gone what, but some of the things too this has evolved from a meeting what would have been a meeting house uh, into a residence through the years and by 18 by like the early 1800s and 1810s uh, plus or minus uh, there was another piece added to the cabin but if we look at a couple of things obviously the original stonework and the dry lay stone is a is a condition that we wanted to uh, maintain and restore um, we haven't been able to exactly date how and when the fireplace was added uh, with the bricks, but uh, the, the stone structures and everything are, are down there uh, underneath in the crawl spaces. As we, as we worked on the project, though, the crawl spaces were very, very tiny. And uh, replacing some of the logs that uh, you can see the earth, the elevation of the earth was up here, uh, almost in contact with the logs so some of the logs have had to be replaced and we've replaced a few of those logs with uh, antiquity logs that we've found from other sites in other uh, time frames of cabins that were built in the same uh, the context of, of time uh, from other areas but from Kentucky cabins if we move on across the face of the building you can begin to see uh, from the second story you'll see the continuums of the logs that go all the way over here to the next corner. And that defines the original uh, structure or the original frame of the structure. And then if you look at the, in the crack between the buildings, and you might have to come behind me to see that, you can see the sidings. And we're, and we're very much convinced that those are original sidings simply because this, this structure that was built in the early 1800s, again, i.e. 1810, 1812, that piece of the structure has been there and consistently through the years. Um, it, appears to, uh, it appears to be unpainted and, uh, and, again, a unique sort of feature to find, and we are mimicking and going back to the original style uh, uh, siding and you see the decoration. It's, it's, it's incredible sometimes to find the idea that out here in, in the pioneer end of the world at that time of the United States, that they still wanted to decorate their buildings. They built cabins but still wanted uh, architectural detail. The beaded, the beaded feature seems to be in almost everything that goes through this little cabin. And it's a very simple detail, but it's, uh, it's very, in, in, in so many ways, is very ornate. And, and very decorative uh, and, and, and shows their commitment to the settlement and, and the, uh, the, the dignity that they wanted to give to their buildings and their architecture, even out here in the, uh, in the frontier. The beaded, the beaded detail also shows in the, in the frames of the windows 
uh, which is, you know, again, a, an excellent thing uh, to find that these are uh, these window frames and stuff are are old wood uh, old wood frames that over the years that were just new sashes or different sashes uh, were put into. These sashes uh, on the front face of the building are original sashes at least from the 1800 period and we're salvaging those and restoring those and you can kind of see there's a patina that the glazing uh, certainly the float glass is an issue that we wanted to salvage save and and completely uh, protect in its uh, truest uh, original form so we're minimally uh, trying to reorganize uh, these windows uh, to become functional and uh, uh, as they as they were and as they are uh, working on some of the details a few sashes have been replaced there there will be a uh, we're going to try to uh, or sashes I mean uh, a few seals have been replaced and we're going to try to match up uh, the little rounded again when you talk about beaded work or or detailed work you can see the age on this seal and probably those seals were not quite as good but the rounded the rounded seal here is really a nice feature, really nice little detail that again coincides with some beading. So this little rounded edge, uh, these small details, you know, make for what you would say just incredible uh, presentation of a very basic structure. Uh, but again, a meeting house, an important structure uh, to the people of the times. Coming into the building and looking at a few things inside, of course the the original floors. Um, are simply on uh, is a subfloor of poplar uh, laid on uh, original logs, and the logs are were chipped off and, and hand hewn off on the top just to make them flat enough. And uh, some of these uh, some of these logs are are just grand uh, grand pieces of lumber uh, that that bridge uh, this uh, this full span here of the original building. You can see. Um, as far as over the years, when we look back at the back wall, you can see how that because of windows and, and uh, door changes, you can see it like an original placement of window here, but then, then a new door feature was added uh, over the years and during the 30s when they made a connection for toilet rooms and, 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 and bathrooms to, to uh, make it uh, a, a more modern uh, uh, residence. When, when those things happened, you can see that they they took you know they picked and chose how they just sort of framed things up uh, with old existing timbers. And one of the odd things is you can look at a detail here, and 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 this is like a a corner board from the original structure where the original siding would have would have bumped into this, and it would have been out on the front corner when they put the 1930s style siding and stuff on. They abandoned that detail. Once again, you see that beaded detail is out there on the edge of, of, that, uh, of that corner uh, stop board uh, and, it, and that corner trim. Um, it's, it's a very cool, uh, very cool detail and uh, again, it just ties it all together with, with just great consistency. Um, you'll, you'll see some of the, when they added the crown, or when they added the chair rails and plastered uh, the walls, uh, there's, a, there's a little beaded detail here and, and of course, I think the window, the, the, the backlighting might make that a little bit hard to see, and as well as still simple beaded detail on the, uh, on the floorboards, uh, the, 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 the trim. One of the interesting things about doing a restoration project like this is you've got a historic log cabin that won't particularly be able to be shown out uh, to the general public as a cabin. And that that makes it kind of fussy to have this jewel of a structure in your community, but not a way to express how that, that uh, how that cabin either would have been used or how that cabin um, originated or, or what it would have looked like. So one of our one of our uh, goals was to maintain the history of the house as it evolved from its multiple uses, graduating from a public meeting place and, uh, and, and a, a, a Christian meeting place to a uh, residential um, personal home, but also to express the structure. So one of, one of our deals is we can't, 
We can't chink the logs. That's not expressive of its original uh, composition. So we are going to, in restoring this room, we're going to restore the plasters. But when we come to the corner, we're going to express by leaving the plaster off and framing and, and a trim and trim it out uh, with uh, you know some old uh, some old lumbers. We're going to trim and expose from the interior a section of the logs to demonstrate the skill and the expertise that they use to assemble these log corners and their joinery and stuff that goes into uh, building this cabin. That'll give an expression of what it might have looked like from the inside before they would have decided to plaster. That would, that would also express their building technique and, and give one, everyone a sense. And again, when you come into the room from the center hallway, you'll be, it'll be obvious that it is a log cabin. And we think that's a pretty interesting way to express that while, again, uh, respecting the fact that much of the restoration work uh, will be uh, in tune with uh, the generational evolution of the structure. One of the details that, that isn't expressed in the uh, exposed or the demolished uh, section yet in this uh, meeting room is the uh, hand-hewn beams that make the second floor. And again, when I, I keep talking about the beaded detail, the hand-hewn beam, they're squared and they're hand-hewn and they're rough cut. And then at the very bottoms of all of those details, they have a little bead on each side of the beam. And you see that traditionally in, in a lot of the rough uh, structures or the uh, primitive structures uh, throughout Kentucky's early history. We're also going to expose a section of that over in the corner where I discussed the exposure of the, of the corner structure. We're going to expose just a little section that we're going to frame the ceiling and leave the plaster off. Uh, to, to demonstrate that detail and their expertise in making those beams. I'm leaving the original room and I'm coming to the center hallway. Again, this center hallway would have been part of the original single structure of the cabin. And this room would have been open all the way to this door. And if you'll, and if you'll recall from outside, the siding is on this wall between this structure. And you see the thickness of this, this doorway uh, represented the thickness of the structure to come through and build into the 18, uh, 1810, 1812s uh, section of the building. This space uh, obviously was built on and it became a residence at this point. With that, with that in mind, this residence was built essentially as a, as a four-room center hallway uh, creation with like a back porch and from old documents and uh, plat records we, we see that this would have been like a doorway that went out the back and, and had a, a, a dog trot porch across the back. This building then at that time, living space, this would have been like the parlor, um, and the living space became more, uh, a little more grand. Uh, you notice the shorter ceilings in the previous section of the, of the house. Now we push the ceiling up and, and we've created a, a very nice, uh, early 1800s parlor. Uh, fireplace on the end. Uh, while the fireplace is probably seeing some renovations, um, you know, mostly to the brickwork and uh, not necessarily to the woodwork. And this, uh, again, uh, is kind of right now the workroom uh, for uh, doing some of the work and the restoration of our uh, original window sashes. I guess another interesting detail is that the doors for this structure and the hardware uh, remain a tongue and groove um, battened style door frame throughout the building with the exception of the exterior doors. And the hardware is, is, a, is, a, is a lever latch um, and I don't know exactly how to describe it beyond the fact that it's a cast iron style levered latch. But in stripping the doors back to the original wood, um, the clear pine that's been used, uh, they're well structured, they've, they've, just, they've lasted really well. And for, for the hardware that I described as the cast iron hardware to match consistently through this whole structure from, 17, from, from the 1800s when they made that commitment to those uh, hardware items to bring that detail all the way through to the 1930s edition that we will see here in just a minute 
is, uh, is, is quite interesting to maintain that and not somewhere in that 30s, 40s, 50s uh, break down and, and, re, uh, and restructure uh, interior doors for a more modern look. As we move into the 1930s piece of the house, you're standing in the 30s section. This wall takes the old 1800s and 1700s sections of the house and se separates it to the additions that were done in the 30s. Um, we found, we did have blueprints, um, though they were modest, uh, we did have blueprints that uh, uh, gave us uh, the definition of what work was done in the 30s uh, to the building and, uh, and we kind of verified uh, our dimensioning and it's, uh, this all was built very closely uh, to, the, to the plan that was uh, presented uh, or that the plans that we had. Uh, this is built very closely to those plans. Again, this would have been, at this point, uh, this is like a dining room. Uh, we, have, we've, we, we maintain the parlor uh, sections of the house. Uh, in the interim, before the 1930s, I described to you a porch that would have been where I'm standing. Uh, that would have been like a dog trot uh, porch across the back. Well, then the, the dog trot version of it would have also been uh, uh, connected somewhere uh, in our plats and our discoveries between the 1812 uh, section of the house and the 1930s edition, there was truly another little kitchen room that was built back here and, uh, and there was the, more of a true dog trot between, uh, between the pieces uh, with the porch extending all the way to the end of the house. In reinventing the plan, we decided that we would stay with this original 1930s piece that was the last thing constructed. And that was primarily because the use of the future building, rather than create the dog trot segregated kitchen area, we, we needed the space for the local uh, historic society to have meetings and whatever. This will ultimately then become their meeting room and a display room and, uh, and any kind of uh, public meetings that they want to have. Uh, as this becomes more used for those purposes uh, and the rest of the structure uh, more or less a, a museum or a presentation uh, the section of the building. So we wanted to maintain this so that they would have room to meet and, and, and the, uh, the warm, warm place to be uh, in the winter and, and a cool place to be in the summer. So we're maintaining this, this section of the house uh, in its with, with its original integrity. The, the minor change that we made in making that decision was that the side porch through this door through this door would have been the little connector that went to the toilet rooms that I described in the first room. And we eliminated those toilet rooms so that we could again go back out onto a back porch um, from this area and also from the center hallway. If we walk around the room and we'll work our way back to the kitchen. There was a little vestibule here between the dining room and the kitchen. Here's where we decided to put a new, a, a new small little wing that will give us a toilet room that's handicap accessible uh, and for the, for the public use uh, for, uh, when, when the building is in public use. And it will be decorated and stylized in a 1930s uh, style uh, to match the kitchen and the things that we have in the kitchen. As we come in the kitchen, again, the 1930s cabinetry we're going to maintain um, with, uh, and we're going to refinish, uh, obviously, uh, but we're going to maintain the cast iron sink, uh, the, the fixtures, and the hardware um, as it's all in really good shape. Uh, it just is dusty and dirty, and when it's all cleaned up, it's going to be, again, it'll go back to being very excellent. We've uh, done extensive work on the foundations, and of course, that's probably another day or another look at, at uh, the stonework that we've done. Maybe we'll walk to the backyard after we leave the interior um, to, to talk about that. But, and also, there is a back porch that was original uh, to the structure, and we're recreating that back porch off of the kitchen. And we can see that from the outside uh, if we do go back outside and, and look at some things. Uh, this basement uh, area, 
was a 1930s edition, and uh, and while we don't have the electric and so on that we need down there to be able to see, um, we have uh, it is a stone stone structure. Um, they maintained uh, the the integrity of the uh, of of the construction type um, by pouring concrete foundations up to grade level and then laying stone on top of the concrete uh, so that all of the exposed foundations uh, on the structure are a uh, stone laid foundation. We believe the center hallway came with the 1800s edition of the parlor. These, this step comes up and creates, and this wall is relatively new uh, of that era, as well as, as well as, again, the thickness of this wall is a little bit thinner than downstairs, but there is still two thicknesses of wall here. And you'll notice in this room, to my left, it, it became an attic style room, but would have been a bedroom. Uh, they, it, it still had adequate height uh, for, uh, to stand in. Interestingly, about the sleeping room that I was describing, you know, probably, probably multiple beds, shared room uh, by family members. And to maintain the look of the house on the outside with the traditional colonial looks that they were after, uh, they, they simply let the seal uh, of the window uh, become the floor of this structure here. And that allowed them to get the additional height in the parlor that they were after for that grand and uh, very uh, more elegant room that they were wanting for the time period. If I come back over here, we come above the original meeting room. And you can look and see some of the hand-hewn beams that, are, that make up the floor joists. And again, the camera won't be able to see it, but you can, you can get down and see uh, with the naked eye, you can certainly see the beaded detail that I described down below. Then the interesting thing, and I did not discuss this prior, I did not discuss the idea that it always was two-story cabin. The center stairs were added when we created it into, a, when it turned into a residence in the 1800s. The original stairs to access this, we discovered the framing in this corner. And it's covered up right now by some walking planks. And you can see that detail is unearthed with, with this joinery here and this header beam that comes in and goes back out to where the fireplace was. They've simply cut the header beam. That's why it's difficult, that's why it's difficult to identify exactly when they made the, they, they didn't make the commitment to this fireplace, obviously, till the 1800s. But this is also when that they, uh, abandoned this original stairwell uh, for the new center uh, stairwell version of the house. I'm creating a couple closets. We have a couple of flat um, closets uh, over here on the corner. The structure has a little bit of, down, like the downstairs, when they created this door to make it accessible to the toilet room that was a little two-story stack of toilet rooms. Um, they sort of stick framed this little section in, leaving again the cabin in the in the corners to maintain that structural integrity. Uh, interestingly, they even used this would have been like a little header beam somewhere on the building, with its with its uh, mortise and tendon uh, uh, framing members where they're hollowed out. Uh, just interesting that they just reused their pieces in the 30s and when those toilet rooms would have been built. In the 30s, those issues, lumber would have been, uh, I guess, a, uh, a commodity that uh, recycling was uh, certainly an in vogue thing during that period. When we began the demolition of this project, in the 19, again, in the 1930s edition, there was a back porch, but there was a two-story toilet room that was built right in here. And you can see the door frame. This was the original meeting house room. You can see the door frame that came into the toilet room. At that point, they had, they had destroyed the original foundation work that had been under the cabin, but this original base beam, this is a hand-hewn beam here, had, had, been, uh, in, had been put in place to carry that load uh, that spanned all the way from the corner, and they had deteriorated these for access into the crawl space of the toilet room area. 
and access into the crawl space of the covered porch. So we removed those pieces to come back to the, I guess what we wanted to say, as, as I described before, a back porch that would have been more like the back porch that was in the 1800s piece of the building and, and the period between the 1800s and the 1930s. We've also then recreated the foundations uh, with original stone and new stone that we've brought in from, that was quarried generally and uh, hopefully we've done a good job in making that match uh, and blending those stones together. But everything is a dry laid foundation system uh, so that we maintain, again, we're trying to maintain the integrity of the building. One feature that, that I must say that I believe was, is valuable for the future is we have, we have obviously added a detail that has led, we've put a copper sheeting flashing um, between the wood and the stone uh, so, that, uh, so that we can uh, stop moisture problems that would have rotted and or degraded these beams and the beams that we had to remove and there's a, probably some of them that are laying around here and you might see a few pieces of them. The, the ones we removed and replaced um, this will this will protect that uh, particular situation uh, in the future. You look to the the porch that we've added, and you will see um, again. You continue to see the hand hewn uh, or the the uh, dry laid stone uh, foundations, and we've peered the porch uh, again, believing that that would have been the the more uh, traditional way that the porch would have been added uh, in the situation. And again, I guess you've, you've, you've gotten that shot, but you can see the integrity. You can see the integrity of the corner, of the corner structure over here uh, of the logs as the building evolved and when, when windows or doors were added like here. You can see that that, uh, that, that cabin integrity and the structure tightness of those corners uh, are just like they were put in there um, just the other day. As we come totally to the rear elevation you can see we have replaced stone steps uh, we've we've again tried to replace them they're on the same uh, the same foundation the same stone location that they were to access the original back porch of the 1930s kitchen the the plywood this is the back door to the kitchen where we were a few minutes ago and if you look at the structure you'll see the back porch we made an elongation of that back porch, again, for it to be a little more serviceable uh, if they were to cater or they was to have uh, gatherings here or whatever. Uh, this back porch would, uh, would serve as sort of an expansion of the kitchen uh, and let them have a little bit more uh, under, out of weather uh, area. And, and you can see uh, the, the idea of where we, where we made the new, uh, the new addition. Again, maintaining that we did the dry lay stone we did the dry lay stone, trying to blend it with the existing structure, but not, but not uh, doing anything to the existing structure. And we've just butted here, and now we're, we're just getting to finalizing these steps in detail, and we're chipping out some of the mortar that had been put into this older section of the, of the stones uh, to, blend, uh, to blend this piece into uh, the structure to have the dry lay appear to change as we move from one side of the steps to the other. This piece of the building, and I don't know if I can lift it up enough to see, but from this corner of the steps here, all of the, all of the, stone, all of the stone is mortared from here around to the porch that we just previously left. And it's just too big a task, and structurally, I don't think that we want to undo that. And so we'll maintain from this point to the porch that's around here on this, just around this corner. From that point to this porch, we will maintain, and you can see it here again, you, we'll maintain this mortared uh, stone uh, without making the adjustments back to a dry lay uh, version of the stones. And it's mostly for the structural integrity, but again, it demonstrates how the building evolved and how the building was used uh, by the many uh, people and families that it uh, that it served and the uses that it served